Okay, this is a strength of material problem. And here we are dealing with a steel tank, which is shown right here. And this is a thin walled pressure vessel. We know its in, in, uh, inside diameter, we know its thickness, we know the E and the nu. And we have a strain gauge that is placed on its side, which uh, forms an 18 degree uh, angle with the horizontal. Now this strain gauge is giving us a reading of 280 microns. They want us to calculate what is the pressure inside this pressure vessel. Okay, first of all, let's uh, draw up the state of stress at the location of the strain gauge so we can have a better view of what's happening. Here is our formula that is for thin walled pressure vessels. We know that we are dealing with hoop stress and longitudinal stress as it's marked right here. So I'm going to go ahead and transfer this over here. We're going to have longitudinal stress this way and we're going to have hoop stress this way. So stress in the x direction and stress in the y direction. This will be my hoop, this will be my longitudinal. Now let's think about the shear stress. Do we have any shear stress here? In another problem in this book there's another pressure vessel here and there's a torsional force on top which kind of wants to twist the entire thing this way. In that case it's easy for us to see that if it would be twisted then this element would have a twisting torsional force on it uh, which would cause shear stress right here we are not dealing with anything that would cause such a thing so we do not have any shear so I'm not gonna mark anything that's all we're dealing with what we can see right here next I went ahead I transferred these formulas over here so I can see them better the hoop stress is all, and the longitudinal stress because this is the one these are the ones that we're gonna start our calculations with I marked over here one half of the hoop stress so we can I just factored out the one half so we can see it better because later we're gonna be able to use it in a more efficient way now what I'm gonna do next is use Poisson's ratio which will be this one now this formula if you're interested this is where it's coming from pause the video and take a look at it the multi-axial loading the three main formulas and from here I'm gonna use these two to factor out and solve for a more simpler form now to continue here we can see that we do not have any stress in the Z direction from in the Z direction for this state of stress there's nothing coming from the back and the front to create uh, compression or tension so we do not have anything in the Z stress we do not have stress in the Z so I cross that out here's the simpler version we can go ahead do some simplifications for the sigma in the y, I'm going to go ahead and plug in this here. Then factor out sigma x. And I have a simpler formula for it. Now I'm going to plug in and I'm going to get a value of 0 0.85. And I'm going to leave sigma x over e as a variable. Sigma x we don't know, e we know, but it's just going to look better this way. Now, I'm going to do the exact same thing for the y. I'm going to use the same formulas, solve for it, plug in, and we're going to get the value for the strain in the y direction. Now, we have sigma x and sigma y. These two will be my principal orientations for the x and the y. I'm going to go ahead draw up more circle for strain 
make sure your markings are correct. Here we have it 1 over 2 for the shear and over here we have epsilon. Now these two will be my principal orientations x and y and as we discussed we do not have any shear and over here too we can confirm that is principal orientation and at the principal orientation we know that shear is zero. So we have the circle and we need to calculate uh, our angle right here. Now every time we go into more circle we need to remember I made a little note here that we are dealing with two theta. So here we had 18 degrees in the real life in real world when we go into more circle we multiply this by 2 so therefore 18 times 2 equals 36 that's my angle inside more circle next step I'm gonna go ahead and calculate my strain average which will be right here in the middle 1 half times strain X plus strain Y now I'm gonna have 0 0.53 and I'm gonna leave sigma x over e of variable just like we left it here we're gonna leave it just like that now r coming from here to there we're gonna calculate also one half over sigma uh, sorry epsilon x minus epsilon y we're gonna get a nice value and leave this again as a variable now how can we calculate our new epsilon x which would be here on the x line on the this line so that would be epsilon x uh, uh, sorry epsilon average plus this section right here till we get here so that we can see this is a right triangle so we can calculate it by r times the cosine of 36 and that's what's over here e average plus r cosine 2 theta 2 theta for us is 36 gonna go ahead plug this in or plug it in cosine 36 now I'm gonna factor out Sigma X over E on the end now we have a nice number here these are all just numbers and we have sigma, sigma x over e. Sigma x in the beginning we determined that it's pr over t. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in here and now we have a nice equation. Now the whole point of this of taking the principal orientation and turning it to the orientation that we had here is because our strain gauge is already telling us that the strain at this orientation is 280 microns so for us we develop this formula here this way this epsilon x is exactly this one now we know every single thing in this formula except p we can go ahead solve for it plug in all our all our unknowns and we are able to calculate our final answer for the pressure inside the vessel. And there you go.